I'm Dr. Thomas Malloy, Medical Director for Cardiac Surgery, Northwest Regional Heart and Vascular at Venice Medical Center in Portland, Oregon. I specialize in adult and cardiac surgery with a subspecialty interest in minimally invasive and robotic cardiac surgery. Our team performs a high volume of these procedures with outstanding outcomes. The most common pathology we are asked to intervene on is aortic stenosis. The valve on the left is a normal trileaflet valve. The valve on the right, a calcified and degenerated stenotic valve. Patients with aortic stenosis generally remain asymptomatic for many years. Once symptoms of chest pain, shortness of breath, or syncope develop, mortality usually occurs within three years. Valve replacement should be accomplished as soon as possible after symptoms develop, or in the case of rapidly progressive aortic stenosis, even in the absence of symptoms. On the left, we see a normally functioning valve. On the right, a leaking or insufficient valve. This is called aortic insufficiency. It is a less common indication for surgery, though quite frequent in our center, and is often repairable rather than requiring replacement. Treatment of symptomatic aortic stenosis requires replacement of the valve either surgically or percutaneously. For patients at high risk for surgical aortic valve replacement, we may recommend transcatheter valve replacement or TAVR as illustrated in this series of slides. This has the advantage of requiring only a small groin incision. However, the calcified leaflets and annulus are not removed, limiting the size of the implanted valve. This technique may be particularly advantageous in high-risk patients who require redo aortic valve replacement as depicted in this video. Both the Medtronic core valve and Edward Sapien valve are commercially available valves for transcatheter replacement. Compared with surgical valve replacement, however, durability of TAVR valves is less proven. The size of the device can be compromised by the calcified tissue not removed, leaving residual gradients, and the risk of requiring a permanent pacemaker post-procedure is greater compared with surgical valve replacement. Implantation of an optimal valve requires cardiopulmonary bypass and surgical removal of the calcified valve and implantation of a tissue or mechanical valve. Fortunately, minimally invasive surgical options have now been developed, and over the last 15 years, I have performed hundreds of these operations with excellent results. This slide shows the mini sternotomy approach used for aortic valve replacement. A transverse aortotomy is made, the valve is excised, and then sutures are placed around the annulus of the native valve. The sutures are then passed through the sewing ring of the valve, which is subsequently lowered to the annulus, and the sutures then tied or secured with a tie knot crimping device. Before surgery, specialized x-ray procedures are performed to determine the exact location for the mini incision. With this approach, the optimal prosthesis whether it be bioprosthetic or mechanical, can be utilized to minimize the risk of future intervention. Recovery from the mini incision is much more rapid than standard technique. Through a minimally invasive incision, mechanical, bioprosthetic, uh, stentless, or sutureless valves can all be implanted depending on the individual needs of the patient. More extensive aortic root procedures can also be accomplished in some cases with less invasive approaches. This data set compares our outcomes at Adventist Medical Center with the Society of Thoracic Surgeons database, which accounts for over 98% of aortic valve procedures performed in the United States. Our data compares favorably with the STS average of greater than six days, length of stay versus about four days in our uh, program. These uh, bars represent the trial of percutaneous valve replacement, the two latest trials, the Evolute trial and the Partner 3 trial, 
uh, the surgical arm length of stay was approximately seven days versus three days for the TAVR arm, not, uh, not dissimilar from our own minimally invasive length of stay of three days. Similarly, you can see that our complication rates relative to national standards remain low, uh, zero strokes for the last four years uh, compared to the STS averages uh, and compared with the latest uh, trial data for surgical and percutaneous valve replacement. Minimally invasive aortic valve replacement mortalities uh, remain low in our program, 0%. Uh, compared with the STS uh, averages and as compared to the uh, trials with the percutaneous uh, valve, the surgical arm versus the TAVR arm. You can see that the vast majority of our patients have the endotracheal tube re removed in the operating room compared with a very small percentage uh, in the STS registry, which represents most of the other programs in the country. Those, those patients that are on the ventilator are ventilated for a much shorter time, from two to four hours compared to uh, four to six hours uh, in like uh, programs. Similarly, intraoperative and postoperative blood product usage in our program remains uh, low compared to the national averages, around 40% and <clears throat> 4 to 15% at Adventist Medical Center. Intensive care unit time, similarly, roughly half uh, of the time that comparable institutions require intensive care management, which correlates with uh, patients recovering more rapidly from surgery. Average length of stay in the hospital, again, roughly four days at Adventist Medical Center the STS roughly seven days. Again, reflects rapid recovery, and the re rapid recovery continues uh, at home. In our center, as a result of the extensive use of minimally invasive techniques, our hospital's universal bed cardiovascular unit, very uh, few uh, blood transfusions, multidisciplinary teamwork, frequent postoperative follow-up in our clinic, and the use of the STS database to continually reassess quality.